In the previous few episodes, we've been documenting four days of vomiting on a large farm in South Africa's Eastern Cape. We've been using a Ticker TC Super Varmint and an FX Impact to shoot vervet monkeys, baboons and warthogs and have had a really great time enjoying the rustic beauty of the Oxwagon camp. In this episode we are going to show you all the ground squirrel hunting footage that we collected over the four days of shooting and it all started on day one as we drove into the farm. We looked to our left and spotted movement down on the grazing lands and immediately the rifle came out. We weren't sure what the weather was going to do for the following few days, so we really wanted to grab every opportunity possible. Luke ranges the squirrels at 220 meters, and I take the first shot. Now unfortunately, the camera's image stabilizer somehow got switched off by mistake, so this footage is really shaky, but if we go frame by frame here, you can actually see the squirrel coming back down to earth after being launched into the air by over 2,000 foot-pounds of energy. Luke manages to take out one or two more squirrels with great headshots before the rest scamper off and we head down to go survey the damage. We're just driving in now. We're not, we haven't even gone to the farmhouse yet and we spotted some squirrels on the side of the road and they're about 220 meters out which is which just shows the advantage of having a big center fire with you sometimes and the, the 260 made short work of them even in the slight wind yeah you know all we need to do is get one little piece of them um, with that rifle and it just finishes them off instantly you can see you know with this one we just kind of grazed the side of it but even that was enough to just turn it inside out um, so that's why we have the you know the bigger guns here today um, with the air gun obviously you've got to be careful with your shot placement and you've got to get close enough we've got a bit of wind here now um, so with the air gun we would have had to get probably 70 meters or less in this wind to, to put in good ethical shots and you know the advantage of being able to reach a few hundred meters out and still put in good shots is, is amazing so we're expecting a we're expecting a good time here that's a good best, sure. best possible way to start <laughs> let's go take them put them on the back <laughs> with plenty of squirrels still around we decide to switch to the air gun the 260 might be really effective, but it also costs about 20 times more per shot. And the air gun's quiet muzzle report gives us the advantage of being able to take many shots before they run off. I want to introduce you guys to a, a new piece of equipment that I have that's just changed everything for me. Usually when I come out to a farm like this for a few days, I'd have to bring more than one 10 or 12 litre 300 bar tank. Obviously the impact falls to 250 bar. Uh, obviously a 230 bar tank just wouldn't work. Um, this is a, a 300 bar 6 litre tank, so it's a really small tank and a tank like this I would only get a few airfalls from the impact and I'd have to actually take it to the dive shop and refer it. And as you can imagine that really adds up when it comes to the, the cost of shooting. But now I have one of these. This is a, an air charger um, by Amiga and this was actually something that I saw when I was in Eggers of Arizona earlier this year and basically it fills any 300 bar cylinder. So all I need to do is bring this compressor with me, bring one of these, it plugs straight into the wall plug, connect straight to my scuba tank, and once this is screwed in, and I can open this up, turn this baby on, and there you go, it's filling. And that will switch off by itself, which is really cool, because I don't have to really worry about it. So we're gonna go have a swim now, and when we come back, the cylinder should be full. The impact is a great tool for hunting ground squirrels because it gives me about 120 shots per fill and allows me to reload really quickly. It's also extremely accurate and the biggest limiting factor is really the shooter's ability to adjust for elevation and windage. I get this one spot on from about 85 meters and it's a good headshot. This one, however, decides to duck at the very last moment and he saves himself from certain death. In these wide open spaces, the wind speeds can really pick up and it does take me a bit of time to figure out exactly what it's doing. This shot is from about 75 meters and I hold a little bit too much for the wind. 
few minutes later I get another opportunity at about 100 meters and this time I don't hold enough for the wind. Yo, that was really close. It's just a little bit of wind. Eventually though, I do get it right and this one finds its mark. Now these squirrels don't taste very good and nobody really bothers eating them. However, it is always good to retrieve what you've shot as a common courtesy to the farmer. No one wants dead squirrels lying around. We spend some time looking for them but somehow it seems the squirrels have managed to disappear off the face of the earth. Well, sometimes that happens, you know. The wind blowing like this, really strong, probably between 10 and 15 kilometers per hour, exactly 90 degrees from me. Um, I had to hold quite, hold quite a bit for the wind, and so it was really hard to pinpoint exactly where the, the, the head or the, the heart and lungs were. Um, and if you just, you know, um, go a little bit off from that, per that perfect kill zone and you give the animal a few seconds to live, these squirrels run down their holes and then you never find them. So I've no doubt that those squirrels I hit um, are dead now. Um, that gun has more than enough power to humanely put them down within a few seconds, but that few seconds of time um, was enough to let them get down their holes, and so we actually cannot retrieve any, which kind of sucks, but um, it's good to know that there are two or three more squirrels down. The next day, we head out once again, and this time there's hardly any wind at all. I spot a colony of ground squirrels about 50 meters away, and with the scope cam off, I'm really able to sling some lead quite quickly. squirrel presents itself at about 70 meters and I get my range a little bit wrong here and end up with a headshot off the ricochet which is not something you get to see every day. <laughs> you have the confidence of knowing that your gun is in you're able to really pull the trigger knowing that the pellet's going to stay true and with a little wind as we have today it's really just a matter of of knowing your hold over so I didn't give any wind for those shots I just held straight on. Unfortunately, I didn't have the scope cam on the gun, uh, but at the same time, I think if I did have the scope cam on, I wouldn't have been able to get all of them in, in quick succession like that. So, really good to be able to get a few ground squirrels down. We've been struggling to even get close enough to them over the last few days. I think they're just really weary. Um, there's not as many as there were last time. With the drought, I think a lot of them have actually died out. Uh, but yeah, they're still pests, and are, even though there aren't as many as last time, our job is still to come here and just shoot as many as we can. So, it's good to get those few down. And I actually do want to talk about some of the, the different bits of gear I have on this trip as opposed to last trip. I've done a major overhaul of my, of my gear since the last trip. I think the last time I was here was in May or June or something like that. It's now um, December and I've actually got a new scope on this rifle that has honestly become one of my all-time favorites. It's an SWFA SS scope. This one just happens to be the 3 to 15 first focal plane scope um, with the mill quad reticle and the mill turrets but I've also actually got a SWFA fixed 16 which I have on a different gun and that gu that scope is actually only $300 it's $299 which is so cheap for a military spec scope these have military spec um, internals they are extremely reliable I've dialed 20 mils up 20 mils down taken a shot and it's held at zero perfectly and I feel completely comfortable just cranking it like this and bring it back and I know it's going to hold zero which is extremely extremely important and again just gives you that confidence when you're shooting. Another update I have is a Leica rangefinder. This rangefinder is really important for the long range shooting we're doing with the rifles where we're shooting you know close to a thousand meters. This rangefinder can see out to a thousand six hundred yards which is 1300 meters or something like that um, but even if we aren't ranging that far so even when we're using it for the air rifle this is extremely important because of a number of features it's got a really narrow beam so when you're ranging you can put that that dot right on whatever you're ranging and you know that's going to be the range it's not going to pick up anything to the side um, it's it's really good in all different light conditions so if you've got a non-reflective surface you can still range hundreds of meters out and it'll pick it up no problem um, and it's got a, an inclinometer so if you're shooting an angle you can either press this red button here which will give you the angle or you can press this button and it'll give you two readings the first reading is the the true distance and the second reading is the shoot to range in other words what you need to dial 
for that incline which is really really helpful so i'm really glad i have this and the last little update luke if you can pass me that scope cam quickly is i've got the same scope cam set up over here but on the front i've got a, a quick attach mount uh, i really want to say thanks to masood from eagle vision who actually has been giving me these these mounts and stuff which have been so helpful when attaching the scope cam this one screw it puts straight behind the scope and just attaches like that and clamps it down instead of having to screw it in every time so it's really helpful it's a universal mount it can go on pretty much any scope so it's really great to have that and that and with those updates i really feel comfortable coming out here and shooting it's really good well here you go we can see all three squirrels over here three or four i can't remember <laughs> here you go here's the first one Looks like right there in the neck, so that's a good clean shot. Second one right over here. In the body, but a good clean shot as well. He didn't, wasn't able to, um, ah, ants, biting my feet. <laughs> wasn't able to go down his hole. And the third one, again, a lot of on him, but another clean shot, this one through the head. I'm very happy with that. So you remember me shooting these last time. Um, these are South African ground squirrels. They're not the same as you get over in the States. In the States you get your Californian ground squirrels, your 13 line ground squirrels, I think perhaps one or two other species, but these are the ones we get here. Um, and interesting facts about them, they actually use their tails to protect them from the sun. So you'll see them puff up their tails and, and use them as sort of an umbrella for the sun and that sort of allows them to stay out here in the heat without kind of overheating um, and you saw how quickly I took those shots that's thanks to the side leave on the impact um, as some of you know I did really well in the speed silhouette this year at extreme bench rest I came third without any practice and I think that's basically got to do with the fact that I'm so used to this exact gun the impact and quickly reloading like this and and taking shots without keeping my eye off the scope so um, I was able to take those shots in quick succession and I know you guys are getting bored maybe of seeing the impact on every single one of my videos but this gun is just really good at what it does and that's why I'm using it. I'm not someone who will just take money from companies all over the world who offer me big money and just review whatever they want me to review. I like to shoot guns that I think are really good. So when you see me shoot a gun a lot you can know that it's a gun that's very good. <laughs> and with that we come to the end of another series. We really thoroughly enjoyed our stay at Wittmuskloof Farm. It was one of those trips that I'll never forget. It had a little bit of everything really. Shooting, chilling, working and a lot of eating. And you can be sure that I'll be returning here sometime in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.